Number eight, we are given a figure, and we see that this figure is the graph of g of x. And we also see that we have the line tangent to the graph of g at the point where x is equal to negative 1. So I mentioned in class, we have a typo here. This is actually asking for h prime of negative 1, not h prime of 1. I apologize for that. That's assuming that h of x is equal to e to the x times g of x. So if we want h prime of negative 1, we should get h prime of x. And to get the derivative of this function, we're going to need to use the product rule. So we have the derivative of the first, and e to the x derives to itself, times the second, plus, now we keep the first, and we multiply by the derivative of the second. And the derivative of g will just be g prime. So we want h prime of negative 1. So that means we have e to the negative 1 times g of negative 1 plus e to the negative 1 times g prime of negative 1. Okay, so we need to figure out what g of negative 1 and g prime of negative 1 are. Well, g of negative 1 is given to us. It's right there. When we plug in negative 1, we get 3. So it means we now have 3 e to the negative 1 for that first part. Plus, now we need g prime of negative 1. We need the derivative. And the derivative is the slope of the tangent to the curve at a point along the way, hey. All right, and here's our tangent. And it's tangent to the curve at the point we're interested. So we want the slope of this line. We can find the slope because we're given another point that the line goes through. All right, so m is equal to the change in y. So we have y2 minus y1, negative 3 minus 3, over the change in x, 0 minus negative 1. Right, so that tells us, and we can easily see that this is a negative slope, and in fact it's negative 6. So we have plus negative 6 e to the negative 1. Right, so what answer do we get out of this? Well, e to the negative 1, we know that's e to the positive 1 if we move it down into the denominator. So we have 3 over e minus 6 over e. And 3 minus 6 is negative 3. So negative 3 over e is our answer. All right, moving on to the next one. This is much quicker. With number 9, we're finding this limit of the difference quotient. So like the problems that you saw with the homework, we know that this is saying derivative. Okay, so basically, again, the, what this is saying is that f of x is equal to the function after the minus sign with an x involved. So we see e squared, but we're really thinking of this as e to the x. And we're interested in f prime evaluated at that number right there. Right, so if f of x is e to the x, then f prime of 2 is what? That's what this is asking right here. Well, if f of x is e to the x, what's f prime of x? Exactly, it's also e to the x. And we want f prime of 2, so we plug in 2, and we get e squared. So your answer is d. And last but not least, we have number 10, which is the sine of e to the opposite of x. So this is something more than the sine of e to of x, it's sine of e to the x, so it's the sine of an inner function, so it means we're doing the chain rule. And in fact, we're doing a double chain rule here, okay? Because we don't have e to the x, we have e to an inner function. But let's get to the first chain rule first. We have the sine of e to the opposite of x. So the outer function is sine, the inner function is e to the opposite of x. Chain rule says derive the outer function, so sine derives to cosine. Keep the inner function, e to the opposite of x and then multiply this by the derivative of the inner function. So now we have to derive e to the opposite of x. We have to use a chain rule for this. e is the outer function, opposite of x is the inner function. Derive the outer, e derives to itself, keep the inner, which makes sense because e to the inner function will always derive to e to the inner function, and now multiply by the derivative of the inner function, and the derivative of negative x, or the opposite of x, is negative 1. That's our derivative. We have to pick the answer that looks like this. 
So we have negative 1 times e to the opposite of x. So we can write e to the opposite of x and put a negative sign in front of it. And then we have cosine of e to the opposite of x. And when we write it in that regard, we see that our answer is e.